Mina, come on, Jesus freaking gamer here. Back with more Psalm 68. And something really interesting. Found an interesting little tucked away verse in here. I say tucked away and it's right there if you read it. Well, let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be Psalm 68 verses 28 through 31, focusing on a bit part of verse 30. Your God has commanded your strength. Strengthen, O God, what you have done for us. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings will bring presents to you. Rebuke the beasts of the reeds, the herd of bulls with the calves of the peoples, till everyone submits himself with pieces of silver. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Envoys will come out of Egypt. Ethiopia will quickly stretch out her hands to God. And the part that I'm focusing on at the end of verse 30 is the scatter the peoples who delight in war part. This is really interesting. Um, you read the title of Psalm 68. Yes, I've decided that those things before verse 1 are titles. I've decided on that and I'm sticking with it. David wrote this psalm. And he was very obviously a man of war. Killed Goliath, presented 200 Philistine foreskins. I'm not even joking about that. Look it up. To Saul to marry his daughter Mitchell. And he wasn't able to build the temple of God, even though it was in his heart, because he was a man um, whose hands were covered in blood. Um, that could be interpreted just because he fought in a lot of wars. It could be interpreted because he had the husband of Bathsheba, Uriah, killed. Um, and I'm not sure where I lean on that particular issue, to be honest. It's one of the two. Not sure which. Maybe a little bit of both, possibly. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's late here. I'm gonna, but I'm getting through this. I'm doing it for you guys. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. I, I set up. I said all of that to set this up. Why would David say scatter the peoples who delight in war? Now maybe David doesn't delight in war. Maybe it's not his favorite thing to do. But my gosh, he does it a lot, and he's good at it. He's killed, according to that one passage. Um, that the maidens of, of Israel sang tens of thousands. That's a lot of blood. And he's saying, scatter the peoples who delight in war. And so I think about this, and it's just like, it just sounds a little bit out of place, especially when we've read several of the imprecatory psalms. Essentially, you know, God, destroy the wicked. God, eliminate my enemies. Plain and simple. Very straightforward. I've talked about that once, twice in the past few weeks. And here's, I'm going to say it again. It's Psalm 68, verse 30. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. I think that in the middle of all of the necessary judgment, necessary fighting, and necessary war, you know, if someone attacks you, yes, defend yourself. Attack back. Don't just stand there and take it. Even in the New Testament, it talks about how the governments are there to basically mete out punishment on evildoers. And God never rebukes government and says it shouldn't exist. Um, anarchy is not a good idea. And it's certainly not biblical. But scatter the peoples who delight in war. I think that in the middle of all the necessary fighting, in the middle of all the bloodshed that needs to be done, I think God... Even the God of the Old Testament, which is the same God as the God of the New Testament, um, any, <laughs> pretty much any Christian will tell you that God ultimately doesn't want war. It's not his first option. It's not his first pick. It's not what he prefers. If he has his way, he will end war. He will bring peace. But if his enemies are going to bring it, God is not going to back down, and he will send his people out, and he will bring them back in victory. But if possible, God wants war to end. And I'll say, you could, and you can even kind of make fun of the phrase, he's going to scatter the peoples who delight in war, so he's going to destroy those who delight in war. Yeah, okay, great idea. Well, is it is. It is. Once you... Once you win your war, and those people are silenced, then your nation's at peace. It actually is a very good idea. And God wants war to end. He wants it to stop. And of course, ultimately, 
when heaven comes, his people will have a city that will never see war again. And God certainly does prefer mercy over judgment. He doesn't delight in destroying the sons of men. And I just quoted two Bible verses. Google it. Look behind me. Check it out. Make sure I'm seeing, saying it correctly. See if I'm saying it correctly. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Bring war to a close. Bring war to an end. And the reason there is so much war and bloodshed in the Old Testament is because we humans in our sinful natures keep opposing God and rebelling against what He wants for us. Hmm. Excuse me again. If we would listen to Him, if we would follow and obey Him, and I'm referring like on a global scale, war would cease. Because that that is not the highest ideal of God. God wants all that stuff to stop. What do you think? That's what I got from that verse. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you see. Uh, maybe it's just a big old pile of contradictions. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for giving me about six and a half minutes of your time. It is greatly appreciated. I love you and God bless.